So welcome back guys. Windy day today. I hope you can hear me okay. I've got my muffler on my microphone here, so hopefully it's coming through okay. Anyway, as you see, I, uh, I brought Jeffrey out today. Uh, this is my 2003 Yamaha V-Star 1100. And I bought this about four years ago, cut off the back end and basically bobbed it out, uh, as you can see. So uh, this is actually uh, from Blue Collar Bobbers over in uh, Utah. The seat, the uh, fender, rear fender, and so forth. Uh, and anyway, I put some custom stuff on here as well, as well as took all of the controls, uh, most of them off the handlebars. So you may have seen I, my starter is over here. It's just a push button starter. Uh, my headlights and blinkers are on the other side. So I've got no controls on this, uh, this handlebar here. Uh, just my clutch. Anyway, I'm not riding this thing. And, um, you know, I was so excited about riding around here because it's a lot of windy roads and so forth. But I know too many people over the last uh, three years that have been seriously injured uh, on their motorcycles around here. And one person, unfortunately, uh, passed. So, um, you know, the problem is the wildlife. People are hitting deer uh, all the time. And deer are everywhere. As if you've been watching the channel for a while, you see I've, I've named a couple of them here at the property. A couple of bucks. <laughs> Sam. Uh, anyhow, uh, they're a real problem, you know, for motorcycle riding. And I've been riding a motorcycle for about 25 years. I've made cross-country motorcycle trips on, on uh, long-term, uh, uh, long-range touring bikes. Uh, I've had bar hoppers. And I've really enjoyed motorcycling. And I've, I've taken a very, you know, uh, conservative approach to riding a motorcycle. I'm uh, I don't take risks uh, that, that are unnecessary. You know, I wear all the gear and so forth. But regardless, you know, it's just, um, I've gotten to the point in my life where I think it's time to, uh, to retire my motorcycle. I love wind in my hair and I can accomplish that through, uh, you know, buying a convertible or something. <laughs> Uh, Lisa loves old cars and especially old sports cars. So, you know, one day we may uh, save up to invest in, you know, an old um, Triumph or an MGB or something. We like those British old racers. Um, and, uh, you know, get a rag top that we can run around in with, with the top down. But for now, I think I've made the decision that I am going to sell the motorcycle. I know my parents are going to be happy about that. <laughs> uh, anyhow, that's, uh, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, probably put this on the market over the next couple of months. You know, it's still wintertime and raining a lot. So I will probably wait until a little nicer weather before I actually put it on the market. But I'll get it cleaned up here. It's been stored in the trailer. Uh, it's got a little bit of rust on it, so I'll get that cleaned up and prepare to put it on the market. Mmm, love me some kombucha!
So guys, I got my metal blade set up on my weed eater. These things are awesome. You know, they will cut up anything. They act kind of like a bush hog. But definitely wear your face mask when you're using this. It kicks up all kinds of debris. So anyway, I'm just getting this tool set up so that over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to begin to shape up, you know, areas on the homestead property uh, in advance of spring. So that when spring does finally arrive, it comes fast and uh, my spring maintenance is a little bit easier. <laughs> Wind is just crushing it today. So good news in Lisa's art studio, that pinhole leak that I had in the roof at the beginning of winter uh, seems to have been repaired. Uh, it's been bone dry in here the last three or four times that I've checked it out uh, over the last month or so, and we've had a ton of rain. So I did go up at the beginning of winter when I pointed that, that leak out to you guys and made a repair up there. So it seems to have held, that's good news. So anyway, She's looking forward to getting this studio activated this summer. And uh, we're probably going to go back to the original plan of making this building off-grid. You know, for a while I thought I would just continue the run from my shop with the power up to this building. But that's another 250 to 300 feet away and would require trenching through the orchard and so forth. So, you know, we don't have any experience with true 100% off-grid in a building. So it would be fun to go, go to school on that process and uh, install solar panels, put a battery bank in, do some rainwater harvesting, and just uh, get educated on you know what off-grid really looks like. I watch lots of videos of off-gridders and they make it look easier than I think it really is. <laughs> but uh, we'd like to find out for ourselves. So I think that's gonna happen this summer. So guys, when we first bought the property and had the property, uh, parts of it surveyed, uh, the back corner uh, of the property back here, we did not have him find that survey marker. It was so thick with bush uh, that he wanted to charge extra to, to go in there and try to find that marker. So uh, we said, you know, we're not that concerned about it and, uh, and left it alone. Anyway, I found a recorded survey down at the county uh, that shows the distance from the survey marker that he did find up here uh, to the back corner. And basically, it goes much, uh, it goes about 60 feet beyond where I'm standing. So it does include these giant old growth uh, dug firs that you see behind me. Those things are probably, oh gosh, 75 or 80 feet tall they're huge uh, and so the property corner is actually behind those trees so that's good news you know when gary was here this summer and cleared all this area out for me uh, he took it back to you know close to where he thought the property line was based on one of these hunting apps that show property lines on your on your phone but in reality it does include those trees so that's pretty cool. I'm happy about that.
So these are all the parts off the original uh, Cruiser, Jeffrey, my bike, uh, that I took off when I bobbed it out. So, you know, the bike was originally a sort of a classic uh, old school Cruiser bike uh, with a, you know, back seat, passenger seat and so forth. These are the original fenders. That's the front fender. This is the rear. Uh, but I chopped that bike up. Uh, in fact, this is the piece that I chopped off the back that the, uh, you know, that everything would attach to, including the rear passenger seat. So, you know, if someone wanted to restore this bike, they could weld this piece back on, it'd be fine. Um, and I've got all kinds of accessories as well, including uh, parts associated with the bobber project that I never did install, like this kit here, which is an awesome uh, foot pegs and forward uh, uh a clutch pedal um, versus the big, you know, flat pads that were on the original bike that are still on the bike. So anyway, there's a lot of stuff here, a lot of electronic wiring. You know, again, I rewired all of the controls on the bike and moved the controls. Uh, so it'd be a fun project for somebody that's into bikes. Um, the original handlebar. Anyway, this stuff was back at the house in town in my shop there, and I thought I'd better bring it out here so when I do put the bike on the market, it will include all of these accessories as well. Saddlebags too, pretty fun. Original seat, there's the passenger seat. So anyhow, the Yamaha V-Star 1100, baby. Alright guys, so Lisa and I picked out a piece of driftwood that we're going to use uh, for a railing on the three steps. And it's going to be this cool piece here. I'll show you how it's going to go on. Okay, so rather than installing new posts to mount this against, um, even though the steps are going this way and this post and fence are going that way, this particular piece is shaped such that because of this little uh, angle here, we can mount this to the top of this rail. And if we mount it like this, it actually sticks out away from this turn here because of, again, because of uh, that bend. So uh, it's gonna look something like this. And that puts the railing even with these three steps. Uh, so that's pretty cool. That uh, means I can just kind of drill. I'll get a, the big long five inch lag screws that I'll drill through this piece into the four by four at both ends. Uh, and then probably do a reinforcement one as well. So that's gonna be the handle. Okay guys, super simple, very hurdy-gurdy. I love it.
We love this ivy growing on this tree. This tree's awesome. What is this, hon? It's English ivy. Ah, an English ivy. What's unique about that? <clears throat> well, it's it's pretty to look at, and it's got you know it does this beautiful thing, but it's very invasive if you don't manage it. Yeah, it's uh, super invasive. So. Uh, you have to manage, if you manage it, it's awesome. It looks beautiful. But if you don't manage it, show you what happens. Yeah, so this is a beautiful alder tree that we have here in the yard. And you can see the ivy has just taken over that alder tree. Um, I mean, it's probably a tower of ivy that's maybe, I don't know, 20 feet tall. And then wrapping around this tree as well. How long do you think that's been there, hon? Not very long, <laughs> a year maybe. Yeah, it seems to have all just come out of nowhere. And like I said, or like Lisa said last year, uh, that ivy was not on this tree this way. So it's very invasive as, uh, as we said earlier. And if you don't take this down, it will ultimately strangle and kill this tree. And uh, of course our neighbors are right below us here and we don't wanna risk that tree falling on their shed garage here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take this ivy down today. Um, so I'll show you something else that's uh, pretty cool that we're excited about with regard to the ivy. So this is a building that I built about four years ago. It's my workshop uh, on one side of the building. And on this side of the building, it's our wine cellar. And I put this uh, local stone on this face of the building. It's a concrete block building. And ideally, I wanted ivy to grow, you know, over the stone and then around the building. And I tried to start that a few years ago, but it didn't, it didn't take. But I just noticed about two weeks ago, I'll show you. <laughs> so yeah, this is the side of the building where my workshop is, the garage door and my, my entry door there. And sure enough, this is English ivy uh, that's growing naturally out of the ground and starting to climb the wall. So that's awesome. I'll train this uh, as it continues to grow and get it to grow that direction and ultimately around and above that stone. So pretty excited about that. What do you think? You that neighbor dog getting you all excited? Oh, girl. All right, guys, thanks for joining us this week. Um, if you like that <laughs> video, um, like it and subscribe. <laughs> what else should they do, hon? <laughs> Smash the like button. <laughs> and we look forward to seeing you next week. Nice. <laughs> <laughs>